this time on Fishing and Adventure. Hey team, it's Scott and Mig here from Fishing and Adventure. Now you're about to watch a full episode that was made for TV right here in New Zealand and we're stoked to be able to bring it to you here on YouTube. We've got heaps of content on our channel, side missions, vlogs, how-tos, so make sure you hit that subscribe button hit it. and join the adventure. Yoo Well, here we are, start of another epic adventure. And I'm pretty bloody excited, Mick. How about you, mate? Oh, mate, uber excited. We're here with the team at uh, Main Freight, and they're getting the ute and the boat on a truck, and we're heading south. How far south, Scotty? As far as we can possibly go, mate. So, uh, <laughs> like we say, bloody excited, so let's get into it. All righty. After the massive success of our trip to Fjordland last year, we decided to make the mission to the South Island an annual event. With tight turnarounds and deadlines, we got in touch with our mates at Main Freight again to get the Surties in Colorado down to the deep south with the plan for us to fly down and have the boat and ute ready at the other end. With the FNA rigs all strapped down, it was now up to Frosty, aka Mr Logistics, to get it to Invercargill safely while we shot back to pack the rest of our gear for a huge adventure to the fishing, diving and hunting paradise that is Stewart Island. So with great anticipation, we boarded our plane and departed the sunny Hamilton for Invercargill, which is the southernmost city in New Zealand. Once in Invercargill, we made our way to the main freight depot and met up with Frosty, who had safely delivered Holy Ship and our ute. So after a quick catch up and the chat about the adventures ahead, it was off to check out our accommodation for the night and try to get some sleep before a nice early start the next day. 30k south of Invercargill is Bluff, which is the southernmost town in mainland New Zealand. Here we dropped Holy Ship in the drink and made our way to the mouth of the harbour. It was a bit gloomy, but the wind was down and we had a nice little weather window, which is definitely what was needed for the final leg of our journey. Separating Stewart Island from the South Island is the Fovo Strait, which at times can be extremely rough and treacherous. And we made it, our final destination, and there's something pretty special about having your own boat in a place like this. What a truly awesome spot. Woo! Miggy, we made it. Oh, mate, we made it all right. Stewart Island. Got Ooh. across that Fovo Strait all right? Yeah, that was a bit of a relief, but yep. it was actually pretty crazy crossing that. And here we are, and the adventure opportunities here are endless. Yep. We've got a bit of everything, the rods, the rifles, and the dive gear, so... Uh, yep. Mate, what do you reckon? We'll reckon sort yeah. this gear out. Yeah, sort this gear out, check out our digs, and then straight back into the fishing. Oh, yeah, let's Woo. do it. Come on. Stewart Island is the third largest island in New Zealand and is home to around 400 permanent residents, most of whom live in the settlement of a barn. The scenery is definitely different to what we expected, with beautiful white sand beaches, crystal clear waters, and if it wasn't for the cooler water temperature, you could almost convince yourself that you were somewhere in the Upper North Island. So after a quick look around Oban, we headed out to get into the fishing and make a start on our Mammoth Challenge. With so much on offer, we decided to make things difficult, and the Stewart Island Challenge is for us too. Land a 10 pound trumpeter, Gather bluff oysters and big power. Land blue cod on three different methods, bait, lure, and a homemade rig. Spot a kiwi in the wild, and shoot a white-tailed deer. All right, spot number one, species number one. We're gonna have a crack at these blue cod on our three different methods. Yep, so start off with the softies. That's the one. There you go. And Lure uh, fishing for the first ones. Yeah, why not? It's a pretty productive way to catch blue cod, so. Well, we've got no bait yet either, so. Yeah, catch our bait. That's it. Find our, make our other lure. We'll be good to go. I think we're just going to put us out of the weather a little bit here, tucked around the back of a little island. So we're just going to flick a few softies around and see if we can't grab a couple of these blueies before moving on to our next method. The other thing is, though, we could catch trumpeter here because blue cod and trumpeter do predate in similar areas. So, yeah. Yep, on something. Oi, first cast. Hey. First fish for the trip. What have we got, Mig? Nice. Better not be a barracuda. Yeah, I'm not too sure. The anchor's back there, remember? Bluey. Blue cod. <laughs> blue cod. <laughs> Look at that. There How it is. good is that? Well, they're on the board. How good is that? Um, See, he's not a beast, but... Um, That's too easy, Michael. I have a feeling that we'll potentially catch a few more of them, so oh, yep, this guy can on. probably go back. 
It didn't take long, did it? First cast for both of us. <laughs> this is what they say about down here. It's, apparently, they're everywhere. Oh, not wrong. That was easy. I'll chuck them back in the drink. Uh, what have we got here? What have we got here? It's not a blue cod. It's a wrasse of some description, Mick. Oh, oh, it's all right. It's an interesting looking species. I've not, not, not caught one of these wrasse before, I don't think. Or maybe I have. I'm not overly familiar with my wrasse species. But that is a wrasse. Let's go with a yellow banded wrasse, I'm going to call that. <laughs> Completely wrong. But... Undoubtedly. I'm not going to harass him anymore. I'm going to get him back in the drink. Nice bluey. Get him in. Oh, that's a good sizey. Ooh, yeah, it's a goodie. Do the net? Um, oh, yeah. Probably oh. lift him in. Oh, he's spitting up, up, all... up all sorts. What's he eating? All sorts of food. Oh, he's a nice bluey too. Yeah. Oh, that's a beast. Yeah, get him in. Oh, yeah, he's a donkey. Yeah. That's a <laughs> good bluey. That? It's like the third cast. That's a beast Man. of a blue. Oh, I got one too. It's not quite as beastly as that. Cod. There we awesome. go. Blueys. That's a nice one, mate. Ooh -wee. My one's going back. Yours is in the awesome. bin. Awesome. Yeah, he's in the See bin, that's for sure. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, that's a softy ticked off. Definitely. And there we have it. A solid Stewart Island blue cod on the third cast. Yeah. All right, well, we need a lunchy, so we'll knock him on the head, throw him in the bin, and uh, throw out another cast, I think. Yeah. Change your butt. What are you going to do, Mick? What's the next technique? Yeah, I suppose I have to mix it up now, don't I? Baits or the homemade lure? Oh, crikey. Well, homemade rig. Probably uh, might have to rock the old baits, I think. What bait are you going to use? A little bit of lollies, a little bit of mix it up. He's bitten onto me jacket. He's not letting go. There we go. They like eating anything, these guys. All right, so we're on to the homemade option now. I'm going to rock a homemade option while Mick gets his bait ready. That's going to come in the form of an albatross feather. The hook, I mean, that part's not homemade. That's the DX Black Magic hook. Tape it around the shank of the hook, like that. Surely blue cod's going to go for an albatross feather. What do you reckon, Mig? Do the damage? Oh, looks beautiful, mate. What do you got going on over there, mate? I've got my little bait going on. We've got, we, um, we got no bait yet, unless you want to use our lunch. We yet. haven't actually got any bait yet, so I'm just going to do the old hook through a, hook through a little lolly there. Quite a lolly, is that, and, uh, is that, is that a jube of some description? Just a little, um, yeah, just a little lolly, mate. A bit of sugar in that. Instead of grapes, so hopefully the blue cod likes some grapes, and we'll see if that can do it. But they're uh, pretty ferocious feeders, like Scotty's saying, so let's see if this will provide. On, boys. Ooh. Oh, hey, hey, on the bait. Yeah, yeah mate. Like... <laughs> yeah. It's a bluey too, I think. Genuine jube. Yeah. They love the grapes down here. They love the grapes, mate. Who doesn't love a good bunch of grapes, though? Oh, good. What have we got? Yeah, Bluey. All right. Ticking them off. <laughs> That's a beauty as well. Yeah, still got my bait, too, so you've got another round. <laughs> still got your grape bait. Probably need another one for lunch, too, so he can, he can probably go in the bin. <laughs> this is amazing fishing, eh? Amazing fishing. Hit it hard, too. Oh, 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 there we go. Bait's still good. All righty, he can go in the bin. Awesome. Didn't think that was going to last very long, so I just put a bit of braid around there, tied it all on, locked it in place. And now that's good to go, I reckon. So let's fire that out, see if we can get our third and final blue card. If it sinks well enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Here it is. Oh, come on, you little bugger. I just put a little bit of weight on it because it wasn't getting down far enough. It's quite a bit of current. Here we go. Yeah, boys. Go on. I don't know if it's our bluey. It's, hey. uh, it's a bluey <laughs> on the lure. There you go, eh? Scoffed it. A Absolutely better, scoffed eh? it. How easy is that? Oh, good hookup, too. I reckon that, I'm going to go try and get a bigger one. But see you, mate. Back in the drink. See you. As far as we uh, challenge is going, pretty good start. Pretty good start with the blueys. It's our blue cod ticked off. Yeah. Too easy. Got him. Got him. Nice one. Oh, I don't know if it's a biggie. It's a bluey, though. Bluey! And it's on the lure, Mick. Oh, he's oh, doing the death roll. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, get out of it. Oh, crap. Hey, hey, ah. hey, 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 hey. Leave him alone, you bugger. Poor little bluey. Getting attacked by Albert. Still pulling them in on the, on the fly. Homemade fly, feather, albatross, tape, braid, rig. It's cute. And, uh, 
It's going to be a good one to fill it up, I reckon. Oh, man, it's so full of energy. Do a bit of a death roll, these blue cod, a bit like an eel. Stewart Island is home to an abundance of unique wildlife, including a substantial population of great white sharks. Several species of albatross also reside here, and they were happily taking advantage of any unwanted scraps <laughs> and even the live fish we were bringing on board. <laughs> he gets his run on, eh? He got it, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, here we go. Yeah, it's better. It's another solid blue, I think, boys. Oh, yeah, it's another goodie. That's a goodie. Oh, yeah, he's going to be a nice lunchy. Oh, yeah. Oh, lift a Rooney. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Look at the colours on them when they're big, eh? That greeny blue comes out in the moment. It really does, yeah. Yeah. It's right out. So you took a shining to the old Savage Eel. Not surprised. A bigger fish. Here we go. Stunning blue cod. All right, so filleting blue cods is a few different ways, but a real quick, simple, and actually really efficient way is you just come back behind the dorsal fin as per, slide that knife back down over the backbone, flip them up that way and just start the skinning process, but don't finish it. Make a little nick behind the rib cage. There, flip the fillet over, and hold it down with your knife and just tear it back. And that leaves the bones and ribcage bones. Beautiful fillet, no bones at all. <laughs> oh, just grab. Oh, it's a great. It's a fight. Get out, oh, yeah, Ben's already whipped the fillets off that blue, and look at that beautiful white flesh. Arguably one of the best eating fish in the ocean, and abundant down here, obviously. So they are the South Island staple, for good reason. That is going to cook up an absolute treat. We're just cruising off to our next spot, came across a nice little bit of sign at the bottom. About 45 metres of water, so I'm just going to chuck the Mincota down, hold us over it. There's a bit of low-lying sign there, and a, hopefully a little bit of predatory fish around the edge. So I'm going to try and target these trumpeter now. Wormy bit of barracuda there. This is the old snapper snack. Pretty cool little rig. Very versatile. Like I said, it's called a snapper snack, but it could obviously also work for other species, as we've seen in the past. So let's drop that down the bottom. We're just going to drift along the face of this uh, sort of weed edge here, and hopefully we'll get some trumples. Trumples, trumpeter. Same, same. Trumple stilt skin. Donald Trumps. Whatever you want to call them. You'll see one soon. Two hooks. Oh, yep, here we go. Here we go, Jeff. Dump you on as well? Ooh. Ooh. What you got there, Scotty? I don't know. It's kind of weird sort of fast head nods. It's, it's solid, though. Have you got a big bluey. Oh, he's another bluey, mate. Ah. Just another bluey. Ow, 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 ow. It's putting a good bend in the scale dragger, whatever it is. I've got a feeling this might be a trumple stilt skin. Hey, hey, get out of it. You're around my line, you idiot. Get out of here. Looks semi-decent. I think it's a big trumpy, boys. It's a nice size trumpy. Oh, you need the net oh, you're right. Yeah, nice. No, you're right, eh? Nice. That's what we're here for. Oh, yeah. Beautiful fish. Yeah. All right. Nice. Not only are they, do they grow quite big, they fight quite hard, and they taste amazing. Can get right to 30 pounds, these things, apparently. I'd love to see one that big. But they are... A little bit sort of slow growing, so when you catch a big one from an area, whoa! Oh, all right. I think I've got yeah, a little big ones will on. usually hit first, so you catch a big one from an area, and then it sort of takes a bit for them to grow back and the, and replenish the area. So I reckon he deserves to go back. Nick's got one on as well, by the looks. Got trumpy, oh, trumpy, we hit the trumpy spot, boys. Woo yeah. Nice. Yeah. Bang on, trumpet, huh? Yeah. Bin's looking pretty good. Definitely the trumpeter spot, isn't it? Right, double trumpies, mate. Back in the drink. Back in the drink. Okay, boys. Here they go. Easy peasy. Sweet ass. Sick. Awesome. With every drop, we're hooking hard finding trumpeter with the lures. We could see the huge schools of them directly beneath the boat, and below the trumpeter, there were plenty of hungry blue cod. 
The Albatross provided some good surface entertainment, and although we were having a blast, we still had the challenge list to get through, so we left the fish biting and moved on to tick off our Stewart Island power. I reckon, Mick, good a spot as any? Yeah, it looks pretty good, mate. Don't really have much of an idea around here, but you're not going to find out unless you hop in the drink. Absolutely. What do you reckon? Power, maybe crayfish? Yeah, we'll have a slip around for both. Just down beneath those uh, granite boulders there, I reckon. Yep, yeah, no, should be some good cracks in there for some crays and hopefully some nice flat spaces for some, for some power. Oh, let's not muck around, mate. Let's get the gear on and get in the drink. Alrighty, keen. It's a bit daunting getting in the water in a place that's well known for its resident great white sharks, but it's just a case of hop on in and try not to think about them too much. Once in the drink, it was obvious that pretty much everywhere you'd look, it was teeming with life. Immediately, we could see huge numbers of power, and in fact, there would have been hundreds of them. Mig wasted no time in getting a few, and it was extremely easy picking. I then had a sniff around with the spear gun and nailed a good sized blue moki, which made a nice addition to the catch bag. Although no crayfish in this spot, there was still so much quality seafood on offer, including huge kinna and the extremely impressive numbers of power. It's a good reminder of how a lot of New Zealand shellfish stocks would have been like before overfishing took place. Mig continued to load up on tasty power before also having a crack at a moki with the spear gun. By this stage, it would be nice to say we had completely forgotten about a potential great white coming in for a look, but when you're swimming around with a catch bag full of fish, it's definitely still very much on your mind. But we were thoroughly enjoying ourselves, and although we well and truly had our challenge power, we made the most of a cool little underwater session and picked up some more Kaimawana to see us through for the next couple of days. Another successful haul. Woo. Oh, yeah. Ah. Hang on, my bag's dragging me down. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Ah. And we left a lot of Kaimawana in there. Some beastly power and some beastly kinners. Yep. Very nice yeah. big kinner there. Oh. Very nice power. Oh, it's got a little moki. Oh, yeah. We've got another moki at the end there, but I think the battery on the uh, goey died, so... Oh, yeah. That was a nice one, though. Stoned him dead, that one. The best shot I've ever done on a fish that right there. Straight through oh, the yeah. head. A little muscle. Bang. Oh, yeah, a couple of, yeah, I've got one good muscle there. I've got that blue cod, too. He was just doing his thing on the bottom. A few more power. Nice. And that's... How easy is that? Uh, that was easy, and we could have got a lot more than that. Oh, yeah. Could've but obviously, take what we need. We don't need... Any more than that for now, because it's still here for another couple of days. Yep, we'll be back in the we'll drink for sure, so I'm sure we'll find some more. That's right. Mate, what a good mush. Bloody yeah. good Just one first spot we stop in, eh? Seems to be the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up, have a look. Yep, sure enough. Get a, uh, get a challenge, uh, one of the challenge species ticked off. Bloody good. Yeah. Although we were pumped from what was a successful and rewarding day on the water, we now only had two more days to get through the remainder of our challenge list, so it was back to our base at Oban for a good night's sleep and prepare ourselves for a nice early start the next day. And coming up next time, the Deep South adventure continues as we try to complete our challenge. Stewart Island turns it on and the challenge species come in thick and fast. 
Oh, uh, come on, mate, he's down the weeds, but it's a biggie. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It'll really help us grow this channel and bring you guys way more content. And if you want to score some of our epic FANZ merch, then click the link in the description below, grab yourself a tea and a hat, and uh, we'll catch you on the next adventure.